Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious efforts so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today we're talking about how to handle your man's midlife crisis. I'm going to share the real reason he's acting that way and what you can do about it. And unbeknownst to her husband, my guest Valerie told herself he had one year to shape up or she was done. So she was shocked when he announced that he was leaving her. She's going to describe exactly how that breakdown became the breakthrough to creating the happy, loving relationship she has now. And then I'll be giving out the award for the worst relationship advice of the week, which sounds pretty good, but will make you resentful unless you make a small but important tweak. All that's coming up. First, let's talk about how to keep your connection, your cool and your dignity when your husband is having a midlife crisis. If you've ever experienced your husband taking what looks like a sudden turn off of family life lane and speeding down immature selfish highway, possibly in a new sports car, then you've probably suspected him of having a midlife crisis. Maybe he stopped telling you where he is or suddenly he isn't coming home at the usual time. Perhaps he complains that he's disappointed with his life and wonders why he hasn't gotten what he wanted. He seems to be throwing away everything you've built together. He's grumpy, depressed, and suddenly irresponsible, which is making you furious. No amount of talking to him is creating the desired effect as he goes along on his self-absorbed way. He may even be saying devastating things like, I don't love you anymore, or I don't know if I want to be in this marriage. It's painful. You may even wonder if he's also given up on his vows. It's pretty serious and terrifying unless you know what to do. So first, let's double check the diagnosis. Is your man really having a midlife crisis or could it be something else? And the reason I ask is because my husband exhibited many of the symptoms of a midlife crisis years ago, and that wasn't the problem at all. The reason he was depressed and grumpy, distant and selfish had nothing to do with being in midlife. The reason he quit both his jobs and the band we played in together on the same day without breathing a word about it to me was not because he had middle-aged crazies. It had to do with feeling like he never got what he wanted because, and this is the embarrassing part, I rarely let him do what he wanted. Of course, he's a grown man, so I couldn't stop him from doing what he wanted, but I often tried to get him to do what I wanted instead. I'd explain why he should go to the store while he was already out instead of making a special trip because it's more efficient. Or I'd ask him why he wanted to get his friend a Christmas present when his friend didn't get him one last year. Or I'd tell him not to order a Coke at dinner because it's such a ripoff at restaurants. In other words, I was a controlling shrew, but I didn't realize it. I thought I was just being logical. I thought I was helping him. It made sense to me to try to teach him how to do things when I knew better, But as it turned out, there were a lot of things I thought I knew how to do better than him. At first, it was irritating, but over time, it became unbearable. And that's when it seemed like he really flipped out. He seemed like a different person than the guy I married. He was angry, contrary, and uncooperative. He wasn't willing to listen to reason from my perspective. Turns out he was just tired of being nagged and nitpicked, micromanaged. My husband wasn't having a midlife crisis at all. He just had a chronic case of critical controlling wife-itis. The heart message behind a midlife crisis is a man saying, I want control over my own life and decisions. And from my point of view, that seemed hostile and uncaring. What about what I wanted him to do? But he'd been bending as far as he could for a long time. And one day he didn't want to bend anymore. He wanted to be his own man and have the autonomy that all men crave. And looking back, I can't say I blame him. But at the time, I blamed him for all our problems. I believed that if he would just do what I was telling him to do, everything would be great. Now I know better. When I could no longer get the outcome I wanted by trying to persuade, cajole, beg, or make demands of my husband, I felt heartbroken and betrayed and furious That still didn't get him to respond any better. I tried ultimatums, tears, and threats of divorce. That didn't work either. The cold war raged on at our house, and I considered throwing in the towel. 
And I'm so glad I did it. I would have missed the most valuable lesson of my whole life and the amazing marriage I have now. It wasn't until I learned how to be respectful and especially to relinquish the inappropriate control that I thought I should have over his life that there was a change in the climate. The more I acted like I trusted him to make good decisions and swallowed my urge to tell him what those good decisions should be, the more he seemed like that responsible, devoted guy that I fell in love with. And when I returned control of my husband's life to its rightful owner and acted like he was competent and capable, like I had when we fell in love, something magical happened. The midlife crisis went away. The thoughtful, considerate, unselfish man I'd married came back and was loving and sweet again. It seemed like a miracle. But now I've seen the same transformation happen for thousands of other women who followed the same steps. And if I can do it and they can do it, then why not you? When you do, his midlife crisis will disappear and the good man you fell for will return. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. Unbeknownst to her husband, my guest Valerie was giving him just one year to shape up or she was done with being so exhausted and lonely with a husband who didn't seem to care about her or love her. She was shocked when he announced that he was leaving her. She's going to describe exactly how she not only recovered from that breakdown, it became the breakthrough to creating the wonderful, loving relationship and happy family she has now. Valerie, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Mm-hmm. My privilege. So tell us, let's go back to the beginning and talk about the bad old days. How was your relationship before you knew what you know now? Mm-hmm. Well, to be honest, I don't really like to go back to those days much, but for the sake of our time, uh, I uh, definitely had a lot of what we call needless emotional turmoil. And I, uh, Yes, unbeknownst to my husband, had given our marriage a year. I uh, felt that he didn't love me, and he was always busy doing something else more important. He uh, had many ways that he tried to please me, but they weren't the way that I thought it should go, whether it be the kids' spend time or I remember so many things that I uh, had expectations, and if it wasn't met, I felt like definitely he wasn't a good enough husband. And then it was definitely backed up by professional, family, faith-based, everything material that says, well, if your husband does husband doesn't do XYZ, then uh, you know, you really should wonder and consider if this is worth it. Wow. Um, so well, yeah. sur- surrounded by validation that your marriage was really not acceptable the way it was. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, honestly, um, everyone's different, but I'm kind of a by the book kind of person. So when you read like in black and white, oh, wow, if your husband doesn't do X, Y, Z, this must be an emotionally abusive relationship, or this must be, um, you know, that he's not prioritizing and he'll never change. And um, definitely I was all over his side of the street, um, for one thing, but also I, uh, was a career woman for a decade and then I became a stay at home mom and I myself felt really, um, inadequate really with what I was doing. And, um, I don't know, it was just like this big feeling of, uh, you know, th- just things were, uh, I wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough and something had to change and it must be him. Yeah. <laughs> hear that. So when you say, he, uh, he was emotionally abusive. Right. That was your thinking at the time. So what kinds of things was this like in the middle of a fight, he would say something or what kinds of things were happening there? Well, honestly, you know, you get these uh, um, kind of relational uh, inputs, checklists. Oh, does he, you know, is he yelling at you? Is he putting you down? And honestly, um, I really want to say as a great bad example you know, I never evaluated, oh, wow, I was actually yelling at him. Um, oh, wow, I actually was putting him down. You know, never really evaluated um, my own little checklist. Um, 
you know, but there's just so much. And I think sometimes these phrases, oh, abusive. And it's like, oh, Lord, you don't want to be in an abusive relationship. Or um, I distinctly, for example, remember reading, you know, if he doesn't do X, Y, Z, then it's um, he does not care. And, you know, you can't be with someone that's apathetic. And um, it was from, frankly, a pretty reliable, um, seemingly, you know, all kind of letters behind the name source. And I don't know, it's just so um, disparaging. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. So coming from being a career woman, too, I think there's also like, yeah, don't let someone take advantage of you, right? You're smart and capable and you can, you don't have to depend on a man. Um, so so your thinking was like, I can get out of this relationship and just go take care of myself and my kids. And then I won't be getting abused anymore. Is that fair to say? I think that's fair to say. And I think that's uh, kind of this attitude in a variety of places, be it our culture, frankly, from personally close sources would tell me, you know, you can do it. You can do it. You can be a single mom. You don't need this crap. You don't need this and, crap. Um, yeah, I think that's. Yeah. that's and yeah. so then you start to think, yeah, I don't need to put up with this anymore. And I right. think you're right that um, either is like this idea of um, um, independence and uh, that that's so wonderful that you can do it, you know? And uh, wow, honestly, Laura, in the last week or two or three, you know, if I would have made those choices, I would have been one very lonely woman with three small kids. <laughs> trying to uh, take care of everything. There were a lot of other factors, but I realized, you know what, Laura, that with the skills, I really realized what my own desires were and stopped listening to all these voices of what I should do. And I realized, wait a minute, I married my husband for a reason and I actually wanted to be married to him. Yeah. I mean, honestly, even just that simple thing was like, wait a minute. You know, this isn't so-and-so's life. This isn't this author's life. This isn't this male author's life who says, well, if a man doesn't do this, he definitely doesn't love you. I was just like, you know, I chose this man for a reason. And when we were dating, um, you know, he looked in my eyes, my husband did, and said, you know, I think I'm created to love you. (laughs) And he was just the most romantic guy. And, um, you know, I just uh, wanted, I wanted things to work out. I realized. (laughs) Wow. But things were, for a minute, they're pretty dark and scary. And was there uh, a moment that you said, I can't, we, this is, we can't go on like this? Well, actually, yeah, my husband made that point for me when um, we uh, were having a fight. We had a lot of fights and, um, and he actually was crying. And um, frankly, uh, my husband's a very, what you would consider maybe red blooded male kind of culturally masculine guy. So, you know, for him to be crying, it wasn't like something he did every other day. Not that boys can't cry, but he was, um, you know, just crying and saying that he couldn't make me happy. And that, um, I was the one with the master's degree and I knew how to do things and he was an idiot and he couldn't do it. And, um, he was going to leave. And I actually was in shock. Um, and actually I found the skills the next day when he, um, Graciously took the kids, um, and I was with home with a newborn, and I found um, your books on my Kindle. So that's what started my journey for me, and uh, yeah. Wow. And so, uh, see, so what what book did you read? Well, I found um, first, you know, things will get as good as you can stand, oh. and really that was the um, what appealed to me the most because I needed a freaking break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're quite tired that day. It sounds like, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, our fight. You know, I love self care now, and yeah, I was so low on self care, and of course, he couldn't make me happy because I was unhappy myself, and I was just, but I was really sober out, and I was sleepless with a newborn and toddlers, and all that to say, yeah, that's where things began for me. So yeah. it was a very dark time. Honestly, it was very dark. Because I was uh, devastated and I didn't know what I was going to do. Oh my gosh. So you really were thinking this is, it's over. He really is going. Is part of you relieved or happy? Because you had been feeling like leaving also. Yeah. I don't, it was just really stressful time. And it was kind of, you know, like this 
power thing where it's like, oh, I could leave him, but wait a minute. Hey, you can't leave me. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally get it. And then yeah. um, also, obviously, uh, everyone, yeah, I have, I, I had three small kids. So I was like, wait a minute, I need your help. <laughs> yeah. or I need someone's help or I can't do this by myself. So I, um, I actually did have some accountability um, after uh, also reading, you know, this rendered wife and I read your empowered wives book with the different stories. And I, I did um, realize um, a variety of things that were, you know, things I was doing. So that was, um, that was good. Although obviously no one wants to kind of see their own bad reflection of what they're doing wrong, but um, it was good. It was good. Cause I was, all, yeah. I was all over it. I was, I was, it was about me, you know, how everyone says. Yeah. <laughs> I had cameras at your house for sure. Yeah. So, and what was the first thing you started doing differently? Well, I really did love the part about, uh, in, then it was a different title, but in the empowered wife, um, empowered woman um, book about uh, self care and um, just frivolous fun. And I remember I would um, just do different things and everyone's life is different. But for me then it was, Hey, I'm going to, you know, have some extra babysitting help and um, I'm going to sleep in and I'm going to let the kitchen go today. And uh, you know, things that for my life seemed pretty frivolous and uh, in a way, enjoy my baby that we planned and we wanted and, um, my third, our third baby. And, um, yeah, so I, uh, started taking good care of me and it was, uh, pretty foreign. Ironically, you know, when you're, uh, for me, when I was in my career, there were all these kind of ways to take good care of yourself. And then for me, as I became a mom, it was like, uh, well, I never really felt like I was allowed to, you know, so it felt really good. Yeah. Well, so as a professional woman, it'd be okay to take care of yourself, but somehow when you became a mom, not okay anymore. Is that right? I don't know why other than I do know why. Um, it seems like all these voices are, oh, well, you have to do this and you have to have a clean kitchen and you have to make sure you're doing this. And I literally had various people that were concerned about me because I wasn't posting more on social media. And um, as in like, you have to put up, I mean, now like there's so much pressure to just have everything look so perfect. And, you know, I mean, honestly, I was up nursing through the night and um, all that to say it was, it was very exhausting. So ironically, when I needed self-care the most, it was like realistically and practically, it was hard to take it too because I had three kids that needed me. So, yeah. yeah. And I think self-care, I feel like is the one piece that a lot of women almost step over when they arrive in our campus. They're like, no, wait, I got to fix my marriage. But mm. not you. You kind of honed into self care. So, how did that fix your marriage? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this part because it was magic. You know, I mean, my husband was attracted to me the whole time, and and I distinctly, for example, remember him. It fixed my marriage because he um, loved to be around me when I was pleasable, and. My happiness, my goddess of fun and light really magnetized him to me, really more than anything. You know, there's all these um, things that we think are um, attractive. And even I remember distinctly one time, my husband said to me, <laughs> you know, it's not your looks, it's your attitude. And when he was talking about how he was frustrated, for me, I remember uh, just it fixed things because I was magnetic again and my husband wanted to be around me and gosh, I can't really blame him. I don't want to be around someone that's burnt out and grouchy all the time, <laughs> you know? Definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. Honestly, when I began taking good care of me, uh, I mean, it was week by week. Um, he just began to do things all over the place that were to please me. And I actually could see the whole time he was in there and, even when it wasn't my expectation, you know, um, uh, meaning in the past, I would think, oh, well, he didn't do this. He must not love me. He must not care. But now I could see with new glasses, you know, he's really trying. This is just the way that um, he's showing his love. And just, you know, it's just because it's not my mother superior way of how it should go. You know, he's really showing me love here. So, yeah. And so there was a moment when you said, okay, the, 
this self-care stuff, these skills, the whole thing, this is really working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah well, uh, honestly, Laura, like um, for me, it was the only thing that was working. Meaning, uh, you know, when things have, were broke down, honestly, people really pushed me to do uh, all kind of different interventions and all kind of different things. And I just knew I could see the skills were working week by week by week from just, I could just feel the warmth coming back and the great guy that I married coming back. And it knew it was working when I kind of took a long shot and did the discovery call for the coaching um, classes. And, you know, um, I asked my husband about it and um, I said, you know, there's these classes and it would help me learn how to be a respectful wife. And if I wanted to, when I was done, I could be a coach. And (laughs) I mean, my husband couldn't really pay for it fast enough. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I love that because I just, um, it was like part of our breakthrough because we were really putting it in um, black and white that we were committed to each other and we were committed to our future. And it was worth a big investment for us. And um, it, it, it's still something that um, I'm so thankful for. And he's too. And it's been life changing. Wow. So you signed up for a coach training really in the midst of not being sure your marriage was going to continue, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> that's some courage right there I love that so and, and 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 now you're a coach now you're an amazing coach so what's your relationship like now I am so uh thankful and you know things are never um like perfect um I still have times where I'm low on self-care or I get grouchy or I'm disrespectful or all the above or you know my husband will throw out bait about something um so that little disclaimer of reality as far as when two people live together it's and with four small kids holy smokes bedtime at my house is like thank god they're in bed <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> But I honestly have so many daily, weekly, moment by moment, pinch me moments where, you know, it's lots of kisses and making love and um, being home together in this time. Um, it's, it's been honestly kind of daily life for us because we're home together all the time. My husband is uh, chosen to be uh, closer to home with owning his own business. And um, I love being a stay at home uh, homeschooling mom. And that's what we're doing. And, we live in a country house that I want to live in and um, we have a quiet, peaceful life on the farm and we uh, just have kids that tell us they're the luckiest kids in the world, their own words. <laughs> and just, our house is full of gratitude and um, peace and a lot of passionate love. And um, I'm just so thankful. And also I noticed something there because we, there were three kids earlier and now there's four kids. <laughs> There are. There are. <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's been four years since I began doing the skills. And, um, yeah, actually, our anniversary is tomorrow. We're celebrating oh. 13 years of being married. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. In my um, transformation journey, I really dug into my deep desires. And um, I really wanted to have a fourth baby. And uh, yeah, so we we did, <laughs> and um, and a part of what my relationship is like today um, is that I know that my husband really does want to make me happy, and the fourth baby was my desire, and uh, yeah, we um, and my husband held my hand through the whole labor and del- delivery. I meant to say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> delivery, and um, so we decided uh, to continue continue on with making babies and that was kind of a uh symbol of our um you know breakthrough really so we're 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 in it for the long haul together so um yeah (laughs) so there was a a lot of confidence a lot of safety and the security of your relationship sounds like Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. that decision Mm -hmm. what would you say to yourself if you could go back and talk to valerie from before just say to her. Mm-hmm. I love this question to you because actually part of me feels like maybe the old me wouldn't have even listened. <laughs> like I had to really be ready. You know, I think these skills really are for people until they're ready sometimes. I 
really had hit a point where my independence and my disrespect and my lack of self-care and being responsible for my own happiness and my martyr syndrome where I was doing everything and he was doing nothing and he was an idiot because he was doing nothing um, in my eyes, um, even though he was doing a lot of things that were good. All that to say, I, it's like I had to be ready. So um, if I were listening, I would definitely say that um, to my former self, that it's never too late uh, to take good care of yourself. And uh, you don't need that permission slip from anyone. And it teaches other people how to treat you. It's just uh, the sweet way to salvage your marriage and your life. Things will get as good as you can stand more and more and more. <laughs> uh, I love that. What is your tip for a woman who's feeling like she's in your situation where maybe her husband's saying, I'm leaving. I can't be successful. Or she's feeling like she's just gone too long without really feeling that she's loved. Mm -hmm. I really uh, know how that feels. Uh, I think it would be so key to work with someone that has experienced a real transformation, not necessarily someone who, um, who has letters behind their name. Um, and you I, have, I would, you have letters behind your name, don't you? You have letters. I do. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. Just, all right. <laughs> no, not. So yeah, so a certificate on the wall because you've been able to, you know, pass a test doesn't mean that you know how to be intimate, you know? And so, yeah, I think it's so so key to work with someone who's experienced a real transformation and. Uh, yeah, I love that saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. For me, that's what this Wu uh, co coaching program was for me. And, um, and my husband would say that it has transformed our life uh, more than anything. Yeah. And how about being a coach? How does that impact your marriage? Well, can I say in a few words, I love it? Um, yeah, <laughs> I love it. And uh, because... I think maybe there's no other uh, way to uh, continue um, getting that coaching. I, lo I love the ongoing coaching that we get in our coaching body. And then, you know, uh, as you're, as you're talking to a woman about self-care, I mean, you have to be practicing it. As you're talking to a woman about respects, you can't be treating your husband like he's an idiot. Yeah. And our, one of our last meetings, I remember getting some feedback about, hey, was that a pure desire, Valerie? And it's like, wow, I'm four years into this, and it was not a pure desire. It definitely had a lot of control there of what I thought it should look like. And it's really, um, I think the coaching program really uncovers your blind spots. It's so awesome to have girlfriends that stand for your relationship in a way that, um, moves you forward and um, not just the empathy, not just the empathy, but which is awesome. But the really um, those coaching questions of, you know, whose side of the street is that on? And is that a pure desire, you know, and, and then you're, you have that space, that sacred space to be and safety to be like, you know, no, it's really not. So thanks for pointing that out. Or to hear on a coaching call, you know, a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm hearing a lot of wheeze and that pure desire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what we should be doing <laughs> anyway so so you're oh, what you're it's describing so humbling. Is it's so humbling it, it, it's awesome it's the best um um self-improvement program out there yeah so, so you I highly you, recommend it <laughs> <laughs> so you like being busted is what you're saying <laughs> when, when it comes when it's when it's right for you like you like being shown a uh, reflection of yourself that where you, you feel empowered to do something differently. It sounds like. Well, uh, I love, I love that word empowered because it really is empowering to, um, you know, see the dirt in your house so you can clean it instead of just saying, I don't know why this house is such a mess or I don't know why no one ever wants to come over. I don't know why it stinks, <laughs> you know, but to be like, Oh, that's yeah. That's probably where that bait's coming from because I was throwing it out first or, you know, and and looking back, do you feel like your husband has changed? Like, is he a different man now? 
Yeah, I love that question. Um, he's still the same great guy that I married, but he's back with full force. You know, he's the loyal, hardworking, trustworthy, um, romantic guy that was in there the whole time trying to please me, trying to make me happy, crying because the relationship wasn't working out. I mean, he cried on our wedding day, happy tears, you know. Um, yeah, so he's he's back <laughs> in a good, in a, what is that? Back better than never be, be better than before. <laughs> My boyfriend's yes, just, <laughs> better than yeah. Whatever I don't yeah. know. And and yeah. why? Why? So we're talking about some really personal things. You're sharing. You're visiting a time you you already said it's not fun to go back. Mm. To, why would you be willing to do that? Why are you sharing this with us? Oh yeah, thank you, Lord. Because actually. Uh, it is very humbling or and vulnerable to share all this. And I'm doing it because I um, would love to invite other women who feel hopeless and exhausted and lonely and like their husband's a jerk and, um, you know, they don't know what to do um, to say yes to what they really want and to say yes to their desires. And for me, I, uh, knew that I did want to stay married to the husband that I chose and I chose him for a reason. And, um, I, uh, would love for other women to experiment with, um, saying yes to their desires. Mm, yeah. I really relate to, uh, I almost feel like sometimes I'm going back in time to fix myself when I share the skills with other women. It's like, I suffered so much. I don't, let's not both do that. Mm-hmm. And I, I hear mm-hmm. that for me too. Mm-hmm. Well, this is so inspiring to hear how you can take a marriage where he's saying, I'm leaving, and you're thinking, I'm leaving, and to go from three kids to getting that fourth uh, <laughs> pure desire baby, and then to have this happy home life you're describing where you mm-hmm. are living. It sounds like you're living your dream. Not perfect. It's never perfect, but um, I hear a lot of love and uh, romance at your house now so mm-hmm. yeah thank you so much for sharing all these all these details with us super inspiring Valerie I just want to say another reason I'm doing this genuinely and and so deeply for me and being a coach too Laura is I very passionately want to pass this on to my girls and um be um uh an example of um goddess of fun and light and a respectful wife and um a happy woman so um that's what the skills um mean for me not only now but uh changing the legacy in my family and and to having a happy marriage you know so so this is your legacy that you're leaving behind not just the life that you're living for yourself but mm-hmm. something for the next generation mm-hmm. yeah for me that's definitely um a big part of it. And I'm, I'm really thankful. And my kids see a huge difference. Um, they love to, we all have big group hugs and they uh, loved it for mom and dad to have dates and just, uh, they're so funny. So um, yeah, it's definitely something for the next generation. <laughs> well, I hear, I hear the joy and the, the happiness uh, undeniable from you, Valerie. So thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. Guess what time it is? It's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that's got me in a fit this week was sent to me by an alert listener which I love. And it's the advice that you should check the balance in your emotional bank account to see how much he's doing for you versus how much you're doing for him. 
And as she points out, and everyone who has ever looked at the balance sheet of their relationship this way knows, humans are biased to believe that we gave more. So the next thing is to start feeling disappointed and mad that he's not giving enough. And if you nurture that line of thinking for like a minute, you can become resentful. And that is not an attractive quality or a fun feeling to have. And it's likely to create needless emotional turmoil in your relationship. So why go down that dark alley in the first place? Here's an easy fix for this that may be the most powerful way to improve your relationship in a hurry. And that is just to ask yourself a different question than who's been doing more or giving more. A great question to ask yourself is how many ways you can think of that your man makes your life better, richer, happier, easier, more fun, more abundant. How many can you list? I like to shoot for 22 things. When you coast down Gratitude Highway, you're guaranteed to arrive feeling better about your relationship and your guy. Comparing who gave more and focusing on that will never get you there. And for that reason, the advice you need to check your emotional bank account to see who's giving more is the worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Thanks for sending me the worst relationship advice of the week. I love that. If you hear some terrible relationship advice and send it to me, you too could get an anonymous shout out on my show. Be sure to listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll be talking about how to get your husband to listen. I hope you're having lots of fun, even though there's a pandemic. Fun is so important. Like the time I had a glass of wine and decided to trim my bangs because what could possibly go wrong? 